newest guy in Mindwave is a consumer EEG device that consists of a headset and um, USB dongle. And the headset can, um, can measure EEG brain waves uh, on the skin of the skull and it transmits these values to the computer. And we have a problem and that is that there is no official support for Linux and that's why I've written a simple MindWave driver for Python that communicates directly with the serial port on the USB dongle and as we can see it works. On the bottom we can see raw EEG values. These waves are um, the direct output from the MindWave headset and um, these are computed at about 512 Hertz, uh, that is 512 values per second. And one of the problems with um, EEG recording is that um, you usually see a lot of uh, artifacts and especially while I'm talking. You might even see that the artifacts are stronger the more I move my lips. Um, the problem is that muscles in the face uh, have a stronger um, electrical signal than usually the, bra uh, the brain wave uh, the brain waves uh, cause. So another problem is um, the heart rate or the ECG rhythms. Um, I can keep quiet and you can see then then you can see my pure brain waves plus the ECG electrocardiogram signal. And uh, the cardio ECG signal is not that uh, problematical, but of course, if I'm talking or if I'm um, if I'm clenching my teeth, uh, then you would not expect uh, to have very high quality EEG signals. On the top left, we can see the frequency spectrums spectra and uh, there I have about 50 bins. I computed these with um, the PyEEG library from the raw values and these are computed at about for about uh, three seconds worth of data. And I colored uh, the different frequency bands according accordingly. Um, there are several frequency bands that are usually leveled and um, we can see the delta values on the left, um, the dark red color, then blue is theta, um, red is alpha, green is beta, and uh, the bluish ones are gamma. So um, I would not expect uh, the high beta or high or gamma um, frequencies uh, to be of much quality or much use. Uh, that's just because it's generally difficult even with professional equipment to read these frequencies uh, accurately. My problem is that I have very high delta frequency powers and that messes up uh, some computations. On the right we can see the frequency bins that are uh, computed by the MindWave headset itself. Uh, these red bars um, should be powers of the different frequency bins uh, relative to the signal strength and there's a problem that I have a very high delta power and if the delta power fluctuates um, it scales up and scales down the um, other frequency bands and that gets um, really well uh, unusable. On the top right we can see meditation and attention levels. Uh, these are computed by the, by the mind wave itself. The headset has uh, some way of figuring these out. NeuroSky does not really tell us how that works but um, they say at several occasions that um, this involves some kind of dynamic learning. So 
um, not only does uh, the value change over time because uh, the brain uh, switches, uh, brain waves, or the brain waves change, but al also um, the 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 basis the basis of computation or the basis of calculation of these values changes, um, and I don't really know what to make of it because that uh, makes for a very capricious signal. But for example, I can uh, I can um, manipulate the attention levels quite easily. Well, um, that was one example of uh, neurofeedback, I can manipulate such a level of attention or the level of meditation or any other um, kind of measure that I want to compute from the data. And that is um, the primary use of uh, this device is to use it for um, some kind of neurofeedback. For example, you can enhance, uh, enhance the concentration that you have by uh, trying to keep attention high or you can do meditation you can try to increase theta or beta or alpha um, frequency bands uh, whatever you really like and some want to use it for ADD for example attention deficit des uh, disorder and there are a lot of uh, pointers that uh, this kind of treatment would be beneficial for children that have it and adults that have it, and um, you can see why. If you can, um, if you can keep the tension higher, or if you get uh, feedback, then you can manipulate manipulate um, the state of your brain. And if you learn how to manipulate uh, the your brain state, uh, then you can learn to do it uh, on your own during the day. Other applications of uh, neurofeedback are um, peak performance training or even there are even um, applications in uh, pain control but I guess that is um, quite difficult to do with EEG because normally they, they do it with, uh, with a brain scanner that um, is not so easy to easy to put in your in your home